good afternoon, everyone. I want to thank Speaker Madigan, uh, President Cullerton, Leader Rodonio, and Leader Cross for the opportunity to address you today. It's an honor always to be in this people's house in our state capitol, a building that belongs to everyone in Illinois. Our taxpayers are very proud of this building and all the people in it. It's been an honor to be governor of Illinois since January 29th of this year. I stood about here and swore an oath of office, and every day has been a challenge. It's been very exciting. It's been very difficult. Uh, it's been very rewarding to work with everyone in this legislature, this General Assembly. I feel that everyone here has offered a great deal to the public good of our state, to the common good, and I look forward to working with you today and tomorrow and every day that I'm governor. I think we are here at a historic time in our state's history, in our country's history, and I think it's very important that we work together. When I was here taking the oath of office, I recited uh, that my father was in the United States Navy for three years, one month, 15 days. Upon his discharge, his commanding officer wrote a letter of reference and pointed out that my father was a cheerful person, an optimistic person, a person who believed in being honest all the time, being frank and cooperative, and being a good neighbor. And so I've tried to do that as governor. I think those are words that we can all live by. And in this very important day, the last day of our fiscal year, I thought I would visit with everyone here about my point of view, direct point of view about what we need to do as a state in order to have a balanced budget that invest properly in the health and safety and education and defense of the people of Illinois. So it is an honor to be here. The last time I was here was March 18th. On that day, I gave the budget address and indicated that we have serious problems, that our state is really suffering its most difficult financial crisis since 1818, since our very beginning. It was true then, it's even more true today, and we have to do something about it. We have a $9.2 billion deficit. It's not going to close the gap by itself. We must make tough choices, not bad choices, but tough choices, tough decisions in order to balance our budget. Now, we've proposed in recent days $2.2 billion in pension obligation notes, and this has been acted upon by this House of Representatives and the Senate in the last 24 hours to free up cash for vital state services, and I commend everyone for doing that. We also need more revenue. Uh, there's no other way to put it. I have said on March 18th, and I'll say again today, we need more than $4 billion from the most progressive tax that we have, the income tax, in order to have a balanced budget. That money will allow us to also get federal matching money for everything possible, another $1.8 billion in additional new federal matching funds. But having done all of that, even if we can do all of that, we still need to make cuts, further cuts, in our state government budget. So I've ordered my staff and our directors to make an additional $1 billion in targeted spending cuts in addition to the more than $1 billion in cuts that I first proposed on March 18th. These are serious cuts. They go, span the, all parts of state government. It can be very difficult to implement, but they must be done. I think the people of Illinois believe that we should always be honest in our budgeting. They believe that it's wrong to hide behind gimmicks and to over or under inflate uh, numbers to make our budget seem to be balanced. I don't think the people believe in slay of hand that merely pushes bad news onto the next budget year or onto the next generation. They know, I think the people know, that we must reduce unnecessary costs in our government. I think the people know and we know that we cannot start new programs without proper funding. They know that we must trim state programs that are obsolete or duplicative, that just aren't high priorities. The people know that our state 
the land of Lincoln should pay its bills on time rather than borrowing from those who are providing services to our state government and who have to wait sometimes six or more months for payments. I think it's important that all of us take these mat matters to heart. These next few hours that we have in this fiscal year must not be about our own elections. They must not be about tactical politics. This is an hour that is being called upon for all of us to do what's right for the common good. We can't just be thinking of ourselves at this time. We must think of the 13 million people who reside in our state, who pay taxes, and who pay our salaries. They know that we, the people's representatives, must guide our state through the most difficult recession in our entire lifetimes. The people know that we, here, the elected representatives of the people, must do things in a proper way so that we don't harm children, harm families, or harm communities. It's important that today and every day forward that we have a balanced budget that we craft with the policy and ingenuity of all those present in this chamber, a budget that makes sense for the people of Illinois. And we must not put off decisions till later in the summer or the fall or next winter. That's not what adults do. They confront tough challenges. They meet those challenges with the best that they can come up with on behalf of the common good. So that's what I believe in. And I believe we must complete that task as quickly as possible. We must embark upon that task today. And before this fiscal year begins tomorrow, we need a balanced budget. This is very, very difficult. We know that it's difficult. But if we don't get a balanced budget, if this General Assembly sends me a partial budget that decimates the social safety net of our state, I will veto that budget. If you, the members of the General Assembly, send me a partial budget that tells the frail elderly that their community care worker will not be at their house tomorrow, I will veto that budget. If you send me a partial budget that cuts deeply into community mental health service programs in the middle of this difficult recession, I will veto that budget. If you send me a budget that eliminates or underfunds any program for veterans, service members, or their families, I will veto that budget in the middle of two wars. If you send me a partial budget that subjects our state to all kinds of lawsuits, scores of lawsuits, resulting from the fact that you have disrupted programs that you yourselves have passed into law. You're not willing to change those laws, to take away legal guarantees that are embedded in those laws. I will veto that budget. Just this afternoon, in federal court in Chicago, Judge Grady issued this decree. It says in a crystal clear, plain language that we, the people of Illinois, are not allowed to cut programs for children, children who have been abused and hurt, that the harm that would occur to children under program and service reductions contemplated by this General Assembly under a budget that does not fully fund those programs uh, would not only harm the children, the harm would be irreparable. It also violates a court order, a consent order that our state entered into. We can't go down that road, and I know people here don't want to do that. That's why we have to be adults. We have to come together, work together cooperatively and collaboratively to come up with a budget solution that works for the people of Illinois and all of those who need our good work. So I'm prepared to stay here all summer to get the job done. I think that's what the people want. That's why we're here, to get the job done, whatever it takes. And you must not as a General Assembly, and I must not as a governor, fail the people. That's why we're here. We're public servants. We can't have half measures and half-baked budgets. We cannot have political timidity. We need political fortitude. That's what we're in the arena for, to serve the people. 
Inaction is not, inaction is not an option. This is our moment in history. It's time to rise to this moment, to take on this challenge. It's time to have a balanced budget for the people of Illinois and to make the will of people the law of the land. Thank you very much.